I'm going to answer the question that I get all over the place. In fact, I've been in Facebook groups for baseball and I see this question daily, if not more than one time a day, and it's how do I pitch faster? I am X years old, I throw X fast, how can I pitch faster or how can I get to X mile an hour? And again, I see it all the time and it's a very general statement, a very general question and it's hard to answer because I don't know you. I don't know who you are answering this. I don't know how old you are unless you put it in your, in your question. I don't know how your delivery is, right? There's so much involved in how to pitch faster. And so it's hard to answer that. But I wanted to make a video today that answers that question specifically. And anytime I see this in, in a Facebook group, by the way, there's a great Facebook group called Professional Tips and Professional Baseball Tips and Drills, where a bunch of us professional pitching guys, hitting guys, are all in there and we help answer any questions you have. So uh, I'll leave a link down below to that Facebook group. It's one of my favorites, you go check it out. But I see this question a lot. So if you're a pitcher, a young pitcher that wants to increase their pitching velocity, this video is for you. If you are a pitching coach trying to help your pitchers pitch faster, this video is for you. This is a blanket answer on how to pitch faster. And I'm gonna try to cover every area, every aspect of it so that you guys can understand and have a better idea moving forward so that you can have some success. Let's get into it. Number one is self-awareness. You gotta have self-awareness. Understand what type of pitcher you are. Are you a power pitcher? Are you a finesse guy? Understand what type of body you have. Are you five foot two and 120 pounds soaking wet? Are you six foot five, 235 pounds? What type of pitcher are you? Are you long and lanky? Are you short and powerful? Are you, you know, you have to understand these things because if you're a guy who maybe doesn't have the same genetics as another guy and you're trying to throw 95 mile an hour and you're worrying about what this guy throws, you're never gonna be able to have a realistic goal, okay? Which brings me to number two, is to set a realistic goal. What is a realistic goal, right? SMART goals are realistic. SMART stands, it's an acronym, it stands for specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely, right? So you could say, I wanna be the fastest pitcher ever in the world. Is that smart? No, it's not very smart because who's the fastest pitcher ever? We don't know yet. Maybe he's in the future. We don't know, it's not timely. Is it specific? Not really. Is it measurable? No, because you know how, how are we gonna measure that? I guess it is measurable because we could use a radar gun. Is it attainable or realistic? Probably not. Not a lot of guys are gonna be the fastest pitcher ever in the world. Is it timely? No, it's not because we said ever. How do we know? How do we know when ever is? We're never gonna know when that guy comes around, right? So a better goal, a smarter goal, would be I want to throw, for an example, let's say you're 14 years old and you're throwing 75, right? I am going, also, you don't wanna say I want to, you wanna say I am going to. I am going to throw 80 miles an hour by the end of the season or in the next six months. Is that specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely? Yeah, absolutely, specific. Yeah, 80 by the end of the, end of the season, absolutely. Measurable, yeah. If we have a radar gun, we can measure that. Is it attainable and realistic? Yeah, 75 to 80, absolutely. That's attainable and realistic. Is it timely? Yeah, you put a time limit on it by the end of the season or in six months, whatever you say. But remember, always say I am going to versus I want to, okay? Write it down on a sheet of paper, stick it on your bedroom wall as you're walking out so every day you have to see it. Even if you don't read it, you are acknowledging it, it's there, it's in your face every time you walk out of that door. Number three is to work on your mechanics, right? Mechanics are the quickest way to improve your pitching velocity, right? You can get in the gym and, and work for months and months and months and get bigger, stronger, and faster, and that is going to improve your pitching velocity. But the quickest way to improve your velocity is to fine tune your mechanics. Get with a coach. If you don't understand mechanics yet, I've got tons of videos on, on pitching mechanics and the pitching delivery and how to efficiently transfer your energy through the ground and through your kinetic chain to pitch faster. I'll link a few of those videos down below, but get with an experienced coach and have him look at your mechanics. Have someone help you who is knowledgeable so that you can make these tweaks in your mechanics and you're gonna pitch faster quickly because that's, again, the quickest way. And it's, it's gonna keep you free from injury, right? If you're doing things efficient in your movement on the mound, not only are you gonna pitch faster, but you're gonna keep yourself free from injury. So that's not only a, a quick way to improve your pitching velocity, but it's a, the safest way. You gotta be able to move correctly down the mount. Okay, so look at your mechanics. Number four is kind of what I just said before, is getting in the gym and working out. If you're at the age, now if you're you know, an eight year old, well, I don't want you in the gym doing squats and all this crazy stuff. I'm talking about my guys now to be more age specific who are getting into high school. I, I think I got my first weight bench when I was 13, but also I was this height at 13. You know, I had already went through my big growth spurt. So let's talk about like high school age guys. Get in the gym, start working out. You gotta create that body, that strong, powerful, athletic, explosive body because 
If you're a little boy and you're throwing, obviously, you know as you get older and more developed and your body develops, you're gonna pitch faster. So if we can get in a gym and we can do it the right way, again, get with a coach, get with an experienced trainer who's gonna help you, teach you how to lift the right way so that you can put that mass on your body and be athletic, be explosive, and translate that onto the mound. Now, think about this. If you add number, what are we on, three and number four together, the mechanics and the gym and the power, you put that together, now you're a more explosive athlete moving down the mound with good mechanics. Just think about where you could be when you put that all together. So that's number four. Number five is to have the intent. And that just means that when you're up here, you're trying to throw fast, right? Sometimes what I see is guys in the game, when they get in the game, or even in practice, whatever it is, they're just so focused on mechanics. Again, mechanics are a great thing. Um, or they're so focused on throwing strikes that they forget everything else and they're just trying to put the ball where they want it to go right have the intent that you're going to throw this ball hard right understand like hey i'm trying to throw this ball as hard as i can right when you give your mind and your body a task to achieve it's going to try to achieve that task so if you're saying in your mind hey let, let me just put this ball here i don't want to throw a ball right okay your body's going to slow down and try to put that ball right there but if you say hey i want to throw this ball as fast as i can and hit that spot guess what you're going to rear back a little bit more and try to go after it and the more you do that, you're gonna have you know, that better consistency. Your body's gonna to start to understand that movement pattern. You moving more fastly and trying to throw strikes, which bring me to number six, which is consistency, right? It's hard as a pitcher to, you know, hitters can get out there and hit 100 balls a day, but it's hard for pitchers to get out there and throw 100 balls a day, right? But you have to have that consistency in practice, in games, that you have that intent, right? You have to go after it because if you're focused more on lobbing those balls in there for strikes, then when you do try to throw the ball fast, you're gonna be all over the place, right? So have the intent and consistency when you are practicing and in games that you're throwing the ball as fast as you can and trying to locate. There's an argument all the time of, if you can throw 100 miles an hour, but you can't locate it, you're never being a great pitcher. Yeah, I agree, 100%. But also if you throw the ball down the middle all the time and you have no velocity, you're also gonna be a terrible pitcher. We have to have both. I don't know why there's this argument of pitching accuracy is better than pitching velocity or, or vice versa. You, to be a great pitcher, you have to have both, right? So that's number six. And lastly, number seven, I don't know how I came off in the beginning of this video, if I made it seem like a bad thing, but it's not. For you asking this question, it just shows that you want to grow and learn more and be a better player. So I commend you on that. I'm not saying this is a bad thing. This is a great thing. You should ask these questions. You should want to learn about pitching. And that's number seven is be a student of the game. Understand what you're trying to accomplish, your goals that you're setting, and go after it. You know, ask guys like guys on this group, the Facebook group, professional uh, baseball drills and tips. Like, reach out. You're doing a great job. Reach out and see how much information you can get and understand this, that especially nowadays with the internet and, and all these Facebook groups and YouTube guys on YouTube and all this stuff, you're gonna get, a, you're gonna have a hundred different coaches all with different pieces of advice. You may get a hundred different coaches in one comment thread that are giving you different advice. Your job as a pitcher is to listen to it all. Take what makes sense to you. Try it all out. See how it feels, see what it does. Keep what's working get rid of the rest. That's your whole job as a pitcher. I want you to create your own pitching philosophy. So at the end of the day, when you're done with your career, you're gonna say, hey, this is what worked for me. This was the best for me, okay? Because if you listen to every single piece of information that every single person gives you, you're gonna be so messed up in what you're trying to do. You're never gonna get into a groove and understand what's working for you. So that's your whole job as a pitcher. Listen, take what's working, take what makes sense, a lot of stuff that you're gonna see online doesn't make sense. So take what makes sense, try it out, keep what's working, get rid of the rest that's not working, okay? It's your job. You're the only guy, you're the guy who's gonna be on the pitching mound during the game. Nobody on Facebook, not your mom, not your dad, not your grandma, grandpa, not even your coach, not your fall ball coach, not your summer ball coach, none of your coaches, none of the people on Facebook are gonna be on the mound when you're in the game. You're gonna be on the mound. So you have to do what you know works, build your own philosophy. So there you go. I hope that answers your question. I'm gonna post this video anytime I see the question in these Facebook groups. If you have any questions, you can reach out to me directly. You can leave a comment in the comment section down here. If you haven't already, please subscribe to Hugo Pro Baseball. I wish you nothing but the best and uh, talk to you in the next video. I wanna show you something really cool and it's these portable pitching 
mounds available at yougoprobaseball.com. Check the link down below. We've got five different sizes, three of them available in the pro version. We've got the six inch tall, eight inch tall, and 10 inch tall in the 30 inch wide version. We also have the six inch tall and the eight inch tall in the 40 inch wide version, the extra wide. Check them out at the link below, yougoprobaseball.com. They fold up, they're easy to move, awesome portable pitching mounts. Check them out.